Ain't it fun living in the real world? Hey guys, my name is Jess. I'm Jess. And I'm Jasmine. And we are... Pi! Awesome, <laughs> awesome, awesome. You know, I was trying to write down those names. I'm kind of glad like you guys said them in order because I had them in order right here. So I'm probably not the only one who like might have these names confusing and you should guys should hear their nicknames. But anyways, besides like their names being so confusing. Hi guys, my name is Isaac Hernandez. I'm today's host for the Apache Curtis podcast show. And today we have Pi. So I'm just going to refer to you guys as Pi the whole episode. Um, just in case, sure. you know, so I'll be like Pi 1, Pi 2, Pi 3, something like that, you know, like, no. you know. Um, but just to get started, just introduce like... Give yourself like for people who don't know you guys, just give yourselves like a two or three minute introduction and like who you guys are individually, you know, like the background you guys come from, things like that. And then we'll we'll go ahead and get started with that. Okay, cool. So I guess we'll start oldest to youngest. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, my name is Jez and I'm the oldest. There's four sisters. There are four four sisters actually. Four sisters. So I'm the oldest, and then the one right under me is Joanna. And then we have Jasmine and then Jessamine. And then there's a 10 year gap between me and and them, like 10, 12 year gap between me, me and them. And we're Filipinos that grew up here in El Paso. Did you all were you all born and raised in the Philippines or I know it was probably Only, just you, right? Just me. Yeah. I was born there when I was one. That's when my parents immigrated here. Mm -hmm. Actually, first to Houston, where the second oldest was born and then moved to El Paso and then the rest of them were born. Was there like a reason you guys chose El Paso or you guys just came to El Paso? Or like um, our mom's a nurse. So in mm. the Philippines, they sent like just a group of nurses basically specifically oh, okay. like in Houston. And then they're trying to find places to send them to like work. And then a bunch of a chunk of Filipino yeah. nurses yeah. Just moved to El Paso. Okay, cool, cool. And what, what got you guys like started like in music? Like what really... You know, like got you guys wanting to do music. Was it like a natural thing you guys like felt you were born with, or like was it like other things that you guys should experience? And you're like, music's my thing, singing's my thing. Ooh, immediately not. It was not like that. Like we had other interests. So we grew up singing in the church. Mm -hmm. So we saw more obligatory than we did as a hobby. Yeah. I mean, we'd sing in the car and have fun singing to the radio. We would harmonize with each other. It wasn't later that they, them and their voices kind of came in and they matured and realized that they were incredible too yeah it, that was later though it was like a gene or something you no know, like like just like a dna type of gene where you're like you're just naturally good at singing you know was it that or no i think i used to be really bad i, I mean, mean like we would singing. have like um singing lessons like in our living room yeah. and uh jez and joanna would teach us um, and then sometimes like on the fly, my dad would be like, okay, harmonize to this song and be like, uh, like, um. <laughs> it reminds me of like the Selena movie. Like, have you guys ever seen it? Like where like he's teaching his like daughter how to start yeah. singing and all that. Like yeah. they get like the band together and like, you're going to practice. Was that like how you guys kind of grew up? Like you guys, like, like your dad was like your guys' biggest influence, right? In a way. Yes. Yeah. It's like, was it like that? Like he was always trying to push you guys to like, you know, go out and like practice sing things like that. Did you guys like that? Like just him like. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Sometimes. <laughs> yeah. I think again, in the beginning it was more of a job than it was a hobby. So we just saw it as I associate singing within the church. Yeah. I didn't see it as something that I could do outside of the church. Mm -hmm. And then we enjoyed it in the church, but since it felt more like a job and nothing that we could do for fun, it took us a long time to realize mm -hmm. that this is what we wanted to do. Mm -hmm. or, or even feel like it was okay to do it mm -hmm. like outside of church like sometimes it was hard for me to enjoy singing a song like um because like i would really like the lyrics but i'm like well i can't do that because yeah. i'm not in church you know or well like from like the, coming from like the philippines and all that like does that have like some type of like kind of motivation to like why how you write your lyrics how you guys go about like the way you guys sing like what type of genre first let me ask that like what type of genre do you guys more focus on we like a lot of R and B. I don't even know if it was funk and R and B. It's like soul, funk, and R and B is kind of the style we like now. But growing up, I think it was very different. I mean, I'm not sure about them, but I grew up listening to JoJo. JoJo. <laughs> it was like okay. JoJo. It was, uh, and I'm blanking on uh, what is it? Alicia Keys. Alicia Keys. And then. Really Mario, Marcus Houston, Omari, like, so they were my influence. Yeah. I'm not sure about theirs, actually. I would say they're, 
music like really influenced me personally yeah like like what influenced you um i guess just because like they're my older sisters and i just wanted to be involved in what they were doing um and i always wanted to hang around the big kids and so, like, whatever music they're listening to, I was like, oh, I want to listen to that or yeah, whatever like they the, do. Like the trends, like, you just want to hop much, on the yeah, trends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about you? Like, what was, like, um, your biggest influence? I do think their music taste did influence mine a lot. At least a lot of the songs I listened to growing up was what they listened to. Mm-hmm. Um, but I guess now, when it comes to music, it's a lot of things I just find on my own. Like, I kind of go down a bunch of rabbit holes. So I'm very much, like, kind of alternative, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They like saying I have like a punk rock voice. When I'm just like, <laughs> You're like really? that, like that, that hardcore voice. And like, yeah, you know. and I'm just like, well, I'm okay. It's <laughs> very Olivia Rodrigo ish. You know, she's an amazing singer. Like, she's what do you guys think Filipino. about her? Yeah, is she she's really? Filipino, yeah. Wow. So it's just like a natural gene in the Philippines, yeah. right? Like, I think that's what it is. Like, that's crazy. Uh, the Philippines is riddled <clears throat> with incredible singers. Actually, mm-hmm. that's one of the things that is highlighted in the Philippines is their talent for singing. Mm-hmm. So. There are a majority, I mean, I don't know if you've ever heard of Leia Salonga. She's the one yeah. who voices and sings for a couple of Disney princesses. Okay. So Mulan. That's all I know. <laughs> Mulan. <laughs> Mulan. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Cinderella? Mulan. I don't know. Yeah. Cinderella sings? <laughs> the one I know. The Cinderella sings? Oh, I don't watch Disney. Nobody <laughs> <laughs> watch Disney. I know you know Mulan. <laughs> Mulan and some other ones, but she got famous and she was in Broadway. Oh, uh, Princess Disney. Jasmine. Jasmine. Oh, Jasmine, yes, from Aladdin. Mm. So that's how you know a lot of, that's how you get to be introduced to Filipinos is because you get to hear these incredible Filipino singers. So we really, (laughs) we really are thankful and grateful that a lot of that is from the Philippines. And we can say that, yeah, I mean, it's... uh, As as much as we want to say it was something we really worked hard on because we did... I want to also say it's natural. Yeah. Because it just runs in the blood of the Filipinos. It's it's a part of the culture. Yeah. It's like, yeah, like you're just supposed to do it type of thing. I know, huh? Yeah. Was there ever like a time where like you guys might have felt like like forced to do it? Probably not because like that's what you guys enjoy. Like was there ever like a point where like you guys were like feeling like you were forced to maybe do it? To sing? To sing or like to be involved just because like it was like your family type of stuff, you know? Oh, heck yeah. Yeah. Actually, it was a little different. We were forced to sing in the church, Yeah. But we were forced to see singing as just a church thing, like I said earlier. But more, if we're looking at a career in yeah. singing, that was no, no. That gotcha. was more, let's go to the medical field if you want to be a teacher. More medical mm. field, if anything. So yeah. we were forced actually more into the medical field. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I ex- yeah? Why? I went to, well, my junior and senior year, I was in a nursing program. Okay. Um, and I finished it. Uh, but I decided not to go through with it. Um, and like that just, it really shifted my relationship with my parents. Um, it did make things harder and I had to, um, find a place where like I could understand where they were coming from and then vice versa. Because they wanted you to do that, right? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Like they, even now, sometimes my dad will be like, oh, you should have finished nursing. And I'm like... No, but now I'm singing and I yeah. like it. So mm-hmm. no, and that, that's tough as an artist to do. Like I've gone through that. I've had many other guests like they gone through that experience. But like, it's not traditional for an artist to pursue art. And when people are like your parents are like, you know, you might you might not make a living out of that. You know, you might it's just a hobby. But then I go back to that point of like you see photographers for like the president. You know, how did they get there? Mm-hmm. You know, they're full time photographers for the president. There's NFL photographers. So I'm like, how did you guys deal with that struggle of like all the doubt that was coming to you guys? Like. You know, people are like, hey, you want to be a singer? Like, you know, you're not going to get anywhere. How do you deal with that? Like the negative sides. I was trying to. You're all going to answer this. So like, I was trying to comprehend what you just said. Like, like when people just put you down and they're like, nah, like, don't do that. Go and go be a police officer. Go be a lawyer. You know, uh, like, but it's your true passion to sing. Like, how do you guys deal with all that? You hear it more from, or we hear it more from like our parents or like the adults. You know, more specifically, like the Filipino yeah. adults, because mm-hmm. a lot of like our aunts, aunts and uncles here um, in El Paso, they're also in the medical field. Yeah. You know, so um, yeah, like they support um, like our like our singing and stuff, and they really like cheer on, like they cheer us on. But like, they're still thinking like, oh, it's still the whole like, oh, what are you gonna do like when you go to college or what yeah. are you gonna do? You know, kind of thing. Like, what's your life goal? Mm-hmm. Yeah. What's your backup? Yeah. yeah, yeah, you hear that? Oh, oh yeah, what's your backup? backup? What's plan B? So like, what what do you say to that? Like, when you're like. How do you explain that you want to do singing as a career? 
Oh, I say, when they ask what my backup is, I'm like, eh, I don't know. <laughs> well, I don't know. Out. I'll figure it out. That's another thing. Like, you don't have to figure it out right now. Yeah. Like, you really don't. And that was also, like, a big struggle because sometimes, um, like, growing up, I felt like, oh, I had to know what I was doing already. Yeah. Um, but then, like, especially, like, guys, this is not a podcast about bashing our parents, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, this is your <laughs> show. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but um, but not let them watch this. Uh, <laughs> I know the, they're always they're coming from a, like a, a place of love. Yeah, um, that's most parents are. Yeah. You know, they want you to succeed mm-hmm. in life, things like that. But yeah. sometimes, like the way they go about it, makes you feel like, oh, I need to mm-hmm. know what I'm going to be doing, and I need to kind of like please them in a way, which yeah. kind of sucks. But I know that with with our parents, initially it was them making sure, and like Apple was saying, out of love. Obviously, they want to make sure we are set and we'll be content and comfortable financially Mm -hmm. and to be able to support our future families and endeavors. But now I know that they still want the best for us and they see where we're at with music and with Pi and they're still 100 percent behind it. Yeah. And at first I thought that they probably weren't, which I don't even know why I underestimated my parents and then they get on me, too, about it. (laughs) But they have been for sure, backing us up all the way with Pi. Mm. Financially, equipment-wise, they always ask how things are going with our gigs. We Mm. always ask our dad for advice. Aside from what he did here in the States, I mean, he did music. He taught himself guitar in the Philippines. He did music. He came from an impoverished family, and he was basically like Mm. the father figure of his like billions of brothers and sisters. And he, when he came to church is when he started learning the guitar. So knowing hard work and understanding, yeah, this comes a little natural, but hard work plays an integral part in how far we go as an artist. We have gotten that from our dad for sure. And then Mm. seeing our mom and that, although she's chosen another path, Again, she's supporting us from the from the front line. She's our biggest cheerleader, and she's a lot quieter than my dad, but extremely wise woman, knowing how we can approach certain things in music and in art and as artists as well. Right, and, and I really want to throw in this question right now, and I want all you guys to answer. Like leading up to that is like, as an artist and as a creative, what is like the meaning, like the word success? What does it mean to you? Just that word success. And I know it's kind of hard to think about, but it's like when I asked you, like, what's success to you? Yeah. Like, I was thinking of an acronym. I was going to be super stupid, but. <laughs> <laughs> Steve Jobs once said. I, <laughs> I don't know. That's hard. Well, um, success for me, which I think will play a part with how they see it as well. But I think success has little to do with how the rest of the world sees it. Exactly. Mm Because it's not for us financial. Yeah. And it's not even the exposure and how big, quote unquote, that people think we should be or how big we think we should get or how far we go. I think success has to do with everything going on inside us and in our hearts and as people and our character because we can be the worst people in the world and be successful on the world's terms. Exactly. But I would rather be someone with a kind heart, someone who's compassionate, who has a passion for what she she's doing. Yeah. And I, the connection I have with my sisters, it's so different going forward with music and having family right beside you like this, Mm -hmm. having my sisters experience the, trouble and all the struggles and all the joys and all the victories yeah. together and that's success for me Hi. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I, don't know, I thought we we're going in order <laughs> um actually even like going back to the whole parent thing like um and what you said um having my sisters here with me like definitely helps keep me grounded yeah um and i know for some people it's probably really easy to have a big head, you know, and um, numbers really count, you know, how big it is and how many followers you have. But, like, I forget about that. Yeah, that shouldn't be your main focus. Yeah, yeah. and, like, I I honestly, I forget about 
like people knowing us and stuff like that. Whenever I'm singing, like I just yeah. honestly I have fun and I honestly I would um, kill for that every single performance. Yeah, just to have fun, be you, be happy doing what you're doing. And it's hard yeah. all the, to have fun every time too, because then a lot of the logistics and the technicalities can get to our head, mm -hmm. but. I want to say that they're the best at keeping it a lot more fun than me because yeah. I can get serious <laughs> quick. Yeah. Damn. Damn. Dang. Hey, we can I put the bleeps on here, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just to mess with the bleep, 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 bleep. bleep. <laughs> like, oh my gosh, you cuss. Like, yeah. she said biscuit. <laughs> Just say bleep yourself while you're talking. Just throwing around and bleep. Be like, oh yeah, bleep. 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 Anyways. Yeah. The whole time, y'all just having a conversation with yourself. This beep, this beep. Beep, 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 beep. <laughs> What about you? Like, what is like, um, success to you? Well, she mentioned fun. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the things I thought of because um, there are times, like, especially in the beginning when we first started, like, all this, when we'd have gigs and there wouldn't be a good turnout or there wouldn't be enough tips, it was kind of discouraging, yeah. you know? Um, especially because our very first gig, it was... A really really good gig and then after yeah. that like then we finally learned like you know there's gonna be times where you're not gonna get the crowd mm. you want you're not gonna get what you're actually hoping for yeah. and so success for me is like doing this when we're um like like i said another gig if the atmosphere is right and we're like kind of on the same level yeah. and like we're all just really like together and like mm -hmm. so we're having fun then i would call that night or that gig of yeah. success. Well, I kind of like how you mentioned like back, like how you were just like, you know, you, they want you to have things figured out like at a certain age. Like for example, people are like, you need to get married at this age, graduate at this age, you know, things like that. I like how you guys mentioned like society's point of view wouldn't really matter. And it doesn't, like it doesn't really matter like where you're going in your life. It matters what makes you guys happy. And that's why I like asking that question. It's like, what is success? Because a lot of people are like, oh, I want to have the biggest fans, biggest following, things like that. And it doesn't turn out that way. And then it discourages them. And so when you guys had your first gig, like your first ever gig as, as a group, how was that for you guys? Like, what did you guys learn from that? Did you guys go in with that mindset of like, I like what you said right now too, where you're like, you're not going to expect that every time to have like good gigs or bad gigs. Like, how was your guys' first gig for you? Ooh. Great. 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 I like that. <laughs> I, I think it'll be about a year since our very first gig. Yeah? Really? Yeah. A year. About a year yeah. since our very first gig. No, and that's interesting because it's been a year, but you guys have done a lot. Like, really like you see when somebody, yeah. you see when somebody's working to yeah. do like make their art reality, mm -hmm. you know, and so it's just really cool year. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I look back and I'm like, dang, we grew. <laughs> You've grown. We grew. And I don't even say, I mean, yeah, we grew in numbers as far as social media presence and all of that. But when I say we grew, we grew as people. As people. We grew as artists. We grew as creatives. Sisters. We grew. Grew us sisters, <laughs> as family, as we grew our network of yeah. friends and other artists. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 that's also part of success, too, is just the people you know as well, mm -hmm. the people you make connections with. And you don't see them as a as just one big as just a ladder. Yeah, you know, I'm absolutely. like, I'm not looking at you as a ladder to my success. I'm looking to you as a stepping stone to propel me into greater things. Right. And it not being something where I just leave you behind because I've made a connection with you and it'd be a fleeting kind of relationship, but the kind that helps both of us and it's beneficial for both of us. So like you, mm -hmm. I mean, immediately when we met you, we all already, it was just an instant click. It was a click. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. And... I remember you talked a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I always do. I always talk a lot. And that's the thing with me. It's like, I get comfortable with somebody. I won't stop talking. You know, see, that's what yeah. I figured. I'm like, but you were talking about your heart. What was in your heart? Yeah. And we saw it just spilled out of you. And it was incredible, like mm. a waterfall of it. And it was one of those things where it's like, yo, I want a waterfall of passion. to just come <laughs> out of me too. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's, it's a tough thing. Like you're not born with it. Just same way as like when you like, you know, you're working out. It's like, you're not going to be having muscles just by thinking of having muscles. You actually have to go to the gym. Mm -hmm. And like train to like go and be muscular and things like that. You have to train like your mind to like, you know, this is what I want to do. This is what I want to be passionate about. You know, yeah. the naysayers of like, no, art's not a real job, you know, like whatever, you know, I'm going to do my own thing and things like that. But um, going back to that question, we didn't really answer. Like, how was your first gig? Oh, like, dang. Like, how was it? Like, what did you guys learn from it? I like, we I, um, I think I, I would say it turned out good. But honestly, our chemistry as sisters was kind of like, eh. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's the reason I asked that question too, is because like when like a bunch of bands, a bunch of music artists, they need to learn their chemistry first. Like mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Like, what did you guys learn from that? Like, um, well, for example, like singing in the church is different. Like singing with them, because like 
you don't really have to pay too much attention to each other. It's just like you play the chords or you sing this harmony or whatever. But um, when we're performing, it's like on top of like singing um, the song, like we want to be able to connect with each other and like be able to have fun at the same time singing that specific song or whatever. And then um, I don't know. It's just like I realized that it was like kind of off. But then, like, as we kept doing more, more and more gigs, uh, we felt more comfortable with each other. And then it's gotten to the point where, like, we know how one of us is going to sing a song. So we'll be able to, like, hit some random yeah. note that they'll hit or, I don't know, something like that. Yeah. I think, yeah, it takes getting used to. It, it took a year. And we're still getting used to each other. We're still learning, things like that. Yeah. We're sisters and there's an, a connection here. But a lot of the times it's... Uh, People think we can read each other each other's minds, but we yeah. really cannot. See, that's what I thought too one time. I was like, you know, like y'all just perform together, y'all live together. Like it's like I you guys are all connected or something. I mean, it's you know? habitual. There are a lot yeah. of things we do that we immediately know. Oh, okay, I, I know what you're gonna do here, but a heck of a lot of other things that mm. we are all surprised at or thrown aback because we're like, whoa, we didn't know that's how you wanted to do that. Yeah. I didn't know you were gonna sing that. Or like sometimes things will happen last minute and like we'll be dragged down into it with her and we're like, I guess we're going to sing this song, like, or, um... Yeah. She's looking at you like, well, what, you just what called me out? <laughs> like, like, name just it, know like, that name everything it. that goes wrong, it's probably her fault. Wow, <laughs> that's too... <laughs> you know what, I will accept. I accept. You know, I'll, I'll say that too, just to put my part in. <laughs> Riding on the whim has not been easy. I'm just <laughs> Um, yeah, the one who's missed, you know, like, two of them. Okay, it's been not been easy, you know. <laughs> yeah, and even performing together, mm -hmm. and, like, she brought up church. In church, there are not as many factors that we have to pay attention mm -hmm. to. One of the things our dad told us growing up singing in the church was that we weren't supposed to focus on everyone else's, what, what their reactions are yeah. because we're doing this all for God and, and it's all just focused on him. And then of course we still break down our parts. We still break down our song, but then outside of the church, we have to, part of how we perform is mm -hmm. also us engaging with the audience. Catering yeah. to the crowd. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we want to make sure, okay, well we will sing these kinds of songs around this time. We'll mellow down around this time. And then so just a lot of factors put together in one gig gets overwhelming. Mm -hmm. And in the beginning, it was extremely overwhelming. Now it still is. Yeah. It we're, just, still we're, is. Just, we're just Nothing better changed. at handling it now. Yeah. <laughs> we're just we all keep our cool now. That's the thing, you know. I just can't wait. It's like you guys performing there. Like one of you grabs a mic is like pounds each other with the other, you know, what like just. What are you hoping for? Yeah? Like, while you're guys singing, like, you're like, mm. he's, he's praying on the downfall of Pi. No, you hear no, him? no, no, no. That's not what I said. I said, I can't him? wait to have a luchador and fight over here, you know? Like, <laughs> who's going to win? Who's going to win? Ooh, stay, stay tuned Ooh, for the next bed. episode. <laughs> <laughs> One of us is going to be missing. Right? And like, damn, like, where's she go? Where's she go? What's been like, you guys, like, have you guys ever been like shy? Like, when you guys started, like, were you guys ever shy people? Like, to even go out there and perform at people? You guys seen me when I talk in front of people I'm like mm, you know okay, but like yeah. when you guys perform yeah. like performing is a whole different level like do you ever get like nerve wracking like what are they gonna say you know like mm -hmm. are they gonna like yeah. it or are they not yeah how oh, did you yeah. deal with that uh, and I I absolutely hate it yeah <laughs> I hate it because I think out of all of the sisters the one that is the most extroverted and the social butterfly is the one that is not, not here. here really yeah okay Definitely. which you have yet to meet right? I have yet to meet I don't remember and a lot of you guys have yet to meet too yeah. but she was the one that she was incredible at socializing. She made quick friends and she knew what to say in conversation. She did the networking for you guys, yeah. She was great at it. Yeah. She knew, she knew. And then when she had to step back for a bit during her pregnancy, we all had to stop. <gasps> and by we all, I mean her. <laughs> 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 and they all leaned on me. They're like, she got it. <laughs> well, no, honestly, no, I'm telling you, there are times where I'm like, hey, like, do you need help with anything? And she's she like, says no. no, I like yeah. feeling in control. <laughs> no, I I have done better at delegating. Don't you dare tell me I'm not good at delegating anymore. <laughs> See, I'm waiting for you to go grab the mic and like, boom, you know, like. <laughs> if the fight's going to break up between anyone. Like, I knew coming into this too. podcast, like, having, like, the sisters just there, something's going to, like, bound to happen where, like, you guys just talk smack about each other. Like, I knew that. Oh, yeah. Afterwards, yeah. we'll probably be yeah. bite each other's heads. You guys are going to go in the car and be like, so you really just.
just said that about me? <laughs> no, like sometimes even during performances, like when we sing off key or something, like when the song's done, we'll look at each other and be like, what was that? But it's mostly at me. Damn. It's mostly at me because I'm the one that also plays the guitar. So sometimes I'll play a different chord or... I mean, I don't even know. She'll like mess up the chords of a song that we sing yeah. every single gig, and we're all like, "What's going on?" The thing is, you know, <laughs> you see a different song out I here. Know, <laughs> I know that I am able to rebound a lot better from a mistake on the guitar. Yeah. So if I do play it, I'll quickly change it with no face change. They're so like, no one knows. They're like, we're but singing there "Twinkle there Twinkle." You over here singing a Merry Christmas yeah. song, you know, like. <laughs> but then when you see if you see a mistake from us as a group, you'll see it in their faces, and that's something that they're working on. Yeah. Are still working uh, yes. on. Okay, I think she's worse than I am though. Yeah, yeah I'm pretty bad. Because I'll say what that. you'll do is I'll play something wrong and you'll be like, <laughs> <laughs> you'll look right at me. You'll let everybody know it was my fault. <laughs> she'll, she'll do that eye contact where she like she yeah. like makes her eyes go yes. towards you, you know? Like the whole crowd follows her eyes to you. <laughs> So that they all know. Like, damn. Right? That's crazy. I was going to ask, like, you know, who's the hardest to work with? But I mean, I won't ask that anymore, you know? Uh, like, we all have our days on Yeah. Yes. Oh, yeah, we do. Mm-hmm. 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 I can think of... Um, Ditto. I can think of some days, yeah. too, okay? Likewise. Damn. Likewise. I'm going to ask, like, a very serious question. This might kill a mood, but, like, has there ever been, like, a point where, like, you guys just were at your down, your lowest? Yes. And, like, you guys just... You, you guys are like, you guys took a sacrifice or something, but you're kind of glad that you took it. But it was very tough for you to sacrifice that or like some type of like hard time that you guys had. But you're glad that you took it. Yeah. 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 Hey, you want to do the audience? <laughs> it was, it's like the same story for all you or yeah. like different ones? Yeah. I mean, it was it's... me. It was you. Like, okay. There was no who else. To... Like where you kind of just like lost hope, but like you're glad you didn't type there of thing. Was... When was it? I don't even remember. I think it was the summer of last year. Yeah. yeah. It, it was the was... summer of last year. Um... Uh, it's 2022. Dang. Are you talking about 2020? Summer 2021. Of- oh, we don't talk about 2020 here. I'm joking. Yeah, 2021. <laughs> Anyways. Or you know, like the beginning-ish, like close before the summer. I can't give you an exact date. Okay. Oh, go on, go on. Um, I was the one that was struggling a lot with doing pie to the point where I was all like, really like, cons- I was like, oh. I was considering quitting. Like, maybe this is just like, not for me, you know? Solo artist type of thing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and we had a lot of hard talks yeah and it kind of shifted my relationship with her actually because when it came to pie like after that like i said like i'll do pie but only like kind of like when i felt like it yeah (laughs) um so when it came to gigs and stuff uh, instead of asking me directly, she would ask her to ask me. Oh, wow. Or she'd be, like, very, like, tiptoey about it. Yeah. And then it would frustrate me. So I was like, why is she being so tiptoey? Why can't she just ask me straight up? Yeah. And then she's like, you're not even going to go. And I was like, so? I still want her to ask me. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, there's just that. Wow. Point. A lot of bashing. Do we have a counter for the bashing sometimes? <laughs> <laughs> tallies. Tallies. <laughs> tallies. Should we put tallies on this? We should I have. I mean, this, she, which I don't even know when you just started doing things without us having a pride. Yeah. I don't know when it was. Like, I, I felt like we had to be extra nice. Yeah. Like, whenever I would ask, I'm like, hey, like, so there's a gig. Like, you don't have to do it if you don't want to, but you can go if you want, yeah. you know? And how was that for, like, you guys? Like, her not being able to, like, go or not wanting to go? Like, how did you guys take that, like, as a group and as sisters and all that? It was heartbreaking. It was yeah. 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 Because pie is not pie without all of us. It's which just... is still heartbreaking because of our other sister who isn't here. We make it sound like she passed, but she really did. She's here in El Paso. No, none of us have ever met her. Like, we're like, does she even exist? Yeah. <laughs> she, you exist. She exists, right? Let everybody know you exist. And then sometimes it even bothers me when people are like, the trio. And I'm like, no. no it's not a trio. Not a trio. How do, the trio. The trio. The trio. Well, how does, how does she see, like, the way that you guys done things on your own without her? Like, how does she see that? I know it was hard for her. It is? It was extremely yeah. hard for her. Because step out real quick. Wait, she's like dying. If you want to step out, go for it. Yeah. <laughs> she probably, I'm gonna I swear, go she's, the she's with us. Okay. Yeah, it was, How was it? It was hard for her. And she wasn't the kind of person that was always open about how hard things would be. So when, she, when we would also have to pry and ask her, like, okay, well, 
how do you mm. feel like what's going on in the beginning? She wasn't letting us know how she was feeling that we weren't reaching out anymore because she made the decision to step back for a bit because of her yeah. during her pregnancy. And then after that, I, we just stopped communicating with her, which was hard. And I mean, it was really on us too. Mm. I don't know. And, and that was difficult because we realized that Pi should not be what defines us as sisters. Like being a sister is outside of Pi. Pi is another entity we get to be, we get to live out and get to enjoy, but it should not be what makes us who we are right. as sisters, mm -hmm. just separate from that. Because we love doing music. We love singing together. We love hanging out with each other even, way before Pi came into existence. So for her, it was difficult, but we're trying our best to still Include her. We love you. <laughs> We're so sorry. If you exist, they love you. <laughs> um, I forgot what I was going to ask. Oh, no, because that, that's interesting. Like that yeah. you mentioned that, like what pie actually is. Because a lot of people are like, they see you guys like, oh, they sing beautiful. You know, they're cool. They're good artists. But they don't really know like why you guys are doing it and like what the meaning of pie is, you know, like a sister, like the sister bond and all that. They just know you guys sing good. So it's good to come on here and like explain that. Like what is beyond pie? You know, beyond you guys singing good, like what what is pie, you know? And so that's interesting to come out and talk about. Well, Pi is a crusted, filled dessert. Oh, my God. <laughs> we were thinking of two Never mind. <laughs> I, was like, I, we I were understand thinking you guys two now why you guys have issues <laughs> sometimes, okay? I get it. I get it. I'm just <laughs> like, yeah, we'll let her do the talking. I get it. Yeah. I get it. I'm going to say something, like, deep. And I, was like, I know, wow. me too. And then I was like, like she used the words crusted. crusted. I was like, like okay. Crusted. And I was like, nice. And then you, were, and then you just kept <laughs> going. <laughs> I was like, I guess. But when you... Poke? No, no. Well, no, that's a serious question though. Like, why pie? Like, like honestly, like, why pie? Sweetie pie, cutie pie, honey pie, apple pie. But, like, why'd you guys choose, like, that? Like, honey, apple? Like, why, like, the term oh, pie? Like, just, no? Did not, that was our parents. These were not self-proclaimed names. <laughs> why not, like, like the, the Beatles 2.0 or something, you know? Like. Oh, no. <laughs> so our parents first gave me the nickname because I smile a lot. Because I smile a lot. That was the reason? <laughs> 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 I didn't know that was the reason. That's what they said, okay? I am just Dang. saying it verbatim. I had no idea. They gave, gave Sweetie Pie because I smiled a lot. They gave Cutie Pie her nickname because she cried a lot and she was adorable when she cried. And I was like, okay. Wait, which one's Cutie? You, the you, one that's not no. here. Okay. And then when they were born 10 years later, we she decided. says, like, it was like dinosaur years to <laughs> lazy. Nine thousand years later. Then we decided to continue the tradition. So with her, it was honey pie. But with her, we thought she was going to be a boy. So we <laughs> had a hard time figuring out. Because my mom didn't want to know the gender until she was born. Yeah. So actually, we thought she was going to be a boy, too. But, <laughs> but and then with her, so we were thinking, man, we don't know what to give him as a nickname. Mud pie. Like we had Why mud? <laughs> Thanks, thanks, thanks. Boys are meant for money. Then, you heard it here first. <laughs> There's no other nickname. You know, that's I don't pretty, know. I'm not sure. Cool, cool pie. I don't know. Oh, awesome gosh. pie. You know, <laughs> the guy pie. You know, I don't know. El Paso Creative. El Paso right? Creative pie. I have my El own Paso too. Pie. Like, come on now. What was yours again? What was it? It was creative pie. No, what was it? I thought you. What was it? <laughs> I don't know. You guys gave me a pie nickname <laughs> when we first met, and I don't know what it was. I thought you came up with it. Did I? I could have sworn you did, because I think you said. Creative pie. E-O-P oh, pie? No, I don't know. Pie. El pie. El pie. <laughs> well, I like that one. El, El pie. pie. I like that one. Uh, El, yeah. pie. El pie. And then so when she was born, I was adamant at keeping her nickname Sugar Pie because all her nicknames all fell under the category of sweetness. Mm -hmm. And then they all thought, no, let's give her apple pie because it makes a lot more sense. And I thought, no, that's just a random fruit in the middle of a bunch of other kinds of pies. Fruit. <laughs> So I was the only one for, I don't even know how long I would, I was like, she's sugar pie, she's sugar pie. And then I gave in and so she's, apple pie. she's our apple pie. So you were the one just fighting it all. Like I just fight a lot, a I lot. guess. <laughs> <laughs> she just, she found that out about herself in this podcast. She's oh like, my gosh, I a revelation, she's like, damn, I just realized like, you know, that is crazy. Um, when, when you guys started 2019, right? Or 2020? End of 2019. End of 2019. So like gigs. going into the pandemic then, right? Oh. Oh, yeah. So then how was that for you? Like, you know, like you're going into like these, like hoping you're going to do like live shows and the pandemic hits like you're like, high Whoa. and then up. Yeah. Crazy low. Like how yeah. was that year for you guys? Like the whole pandemic and stuff. Um, the pandemic was the pandemic. <laughs> I think when you hear pandemic immediately, you're traumatized. So <laughs> I'm like, whoa. Yeah. But the 
I thought, because I didn't know how to go about pie and we didn't really know how to go about pie at all. So when we started it at the end of 2019, we said we made it official. We thought it was just going to be more, we're just going to post a couple of covers on Instagram. And so 2020 was not a lot of pressure for us. Yeah. So it was okay. We got to relax, have fun. And it was a side thing. Then Beginning of 2021, I don't know what happened, but I came up with the idea of us going, let's do our very first gig. Mm -hmm. And from there is when we went downhill. Just kidding. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And from there, that's where we progressed. Mm -hmm. So 2020 was chill, chill, just Just no pressure. Yeah. Yeah which was good because we focused all our energy on a lot of other things that at that time needed mm. our needed to be prioritized. Yeah. You guys kind of just planned out what you yeah, guys, where so you guys were heading. It was a good like thing that, that yeah. 2020 was a, we call it our hiatus or we say it doesn't exist in the timeline mm. of well, What's interesting is like, I don't think I would have done the podcast if it wasn't for 2020 because I was always like going into like thinking I was going to do events, things like that. Mm-hmm. And then once I, Hey, I was like, what can I do for artists? And so I was like, no one could go to events, you know, they're not getting exposure. So I'm like, I was listening to a podcast at the time. I was like, I'm going to do a podcast. And so I did it through Zoom, like most of like the, the whole year I did podcasting in Zoom. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, well, like, I mean, it was so different for everybody. Yeah. yeah. The last two questions, the last questions I want to ask because we're like running out of time is one piece of advice that you guys would give, whether it's something that people given you or something you want to give it out, what would that one piece be? For like anybody even starting up like in the music industry, things like that, you know, like becoming a, a band or solo artist. Oh, I'm looking at them to answer first because I've been answering um, first. We'll start this way and go. Yeah. Boom. Watch oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> She's like, oh, beep, beep, beep. <laughs> the moment of silence right here. Just. Oh, uh, when it comes to the people supporting you, it's about the quality of the people and not the quality. quality. I like that. Ooh, that is really that good. That was a great one. That is really good. I don't want to go anymore. Oh, right. <laughs> nice. Next, Next question. Next question. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I feel like a lot of it was just kind of like me venting to Jez or to, oh, to Jessamine. I, I so you forget the one. names too, right? Okay. <laughs> we, don't, we don't call each other by our real names. You guys like do ever. nicknames, really? Yeah, nicknames. Okay, wow. Never have I called her Jezreel. That's gross. That's Jasmine, gross. That's disgusting. She doesn't call me by my, my Joanna, name. Joanna, that's more gross. She calls me Ate, which means Ate. big sister in Filipino or in oh. Tagalog. Yeah. Wait, you told me most of the Philippines is like Spanish in a way, right? Yeah, well, not that. Well, like in a way. Well, not that word, but like just like most of the terms. Yeah. yeah. Basura. Basura. Zapatos. <laughs> We're learning Philippines now all of a sudden. <laughs> so, you're finishing? Uh, oh, yeah. So, like, I think there are just a lot of things, like, I realized, like, after, after the fact of, like, mm-hmm. venting to them, like, it's okay that it sucks. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's okay to hit those walls sometimes it's okay to let those waves of like doubt of confusion of frustration come over you and like slowly over time they won't those waves won't be as frequent and in between that you'll have room to breathe and have room to think you know have room to grow um and time to even prepare for when those next waves come Mm -hmm. and And i I think going going off of her advice or what you've taken is that in the midst of all the struggle, you take it in stride. Mm -hmm. So instead of seeing this as a wall that stops me, but more as a wall that reminds me of where I don't want to be again. Yeah. Or instead of seeing this as something that destroyed me, more like something that had me start from the beginning again, Mm -hmm. you know? And... That is such a hard thing for anybody outside, even not just artists, but anybody in general, when they're pursuing or when we're pursuing what we're passionate about. Yeah. We often see, and I'm extremely guilty at it, but we often see a bunch of the times we hit the floor and we don't know where we're going and we're completely lost as us just being lost Mm -hmm. instead of us going, well, Maybe there's another direction I can go right. or, oh, well, maybe then I'm not going to do it like this. Or maybe this means I need to rest. <laughs> maybe yeah. this means I need to. Because you do burn out and things yeah. like that. Yeah. And, and then I've recently fallen in love with the song by Billy Joel, Vienna, because the okay. lyrics are, are exactly that. It's like, slow down, 
yeah. slow down and, and take in every single moment because I have definitely not taken in every single moment yeah. and going so hard at what you're doing and pursuing and trying to reach these goals. We really don't. And it's cliche, but we don't stop to smell the roses. I don't stop and go. I love my sisters and I would not be here without them. Yeah. Absolutely. Cry here. And we love you too. I like that. The, the, the fighting the whole episode and at the end, it's like you come together. It feels like a movie. I feel like I'm watching yeah. a movie. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I'm, I'm not too physical. She's like, no, 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 no. Yeah. We'll get home. With, we're throwing, we're throwing like gloves hugs. on. I'm not a physical. You, have, not in that whole, like, physical. you have to love her by giving her boba. Oh, boba, boba and some Chick-fil-A or something. Chick-fil-A. Chick-fil-A. Hey, you know what Chick-fil-A sauce? Mm. Dude, Chick Fil A sauce. Yes, I don't like Chick Fil A. You sauce. are. That's what I get. You guys. I get you guys now. <laughs> no, no, no. I understand yeah, no, no, you guys. No, she likes Chick Fil A sauce, but she doesn't eat sauce in general. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I'm the only good one. You're the only normal one. Right You're the only normal. One. I'm gonna talk to you. <laughs> God dang, that that's sorry. crazy. So, so what's like? What's next? What's coming for Pi? You know, um, where are you guys heading? Things like that. So after this, we're going home to sleep. Okay. Not like. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> okay. You're, you're, you're no, two I'm year kidding. plan. I'm trying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, today is this weekend. Oh, actually the very first weekend of this month of this year was our most restful weekend because every weekend we usually have a gig or two. Yeah. And today we had a very windy gig at Upper Valley this afternoon. It was cold too. And yes, it was. And then they came a little late because they had to come after church and I held down the fort. And it was, it's always hard She's to, like, twinkle, to do this. Twinkle. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to do this guys. You have to wait for my sisters. But after this, we have just every weekend we usually get gigs. So definitely check out our social media, especially our Instagram. We always have a highlight that shows our upcoming live shows at the end of this month. We are going to be at the, through the looking glass actually, looking glass, okay. which is another art place. And they're having their first market, like I guess artisan market. Yeah ever over there and we're we get to be a part of that grand opening they also have some great things coming that is aside from pie Ooh. but before we get that i'm just gonna mention riding on a whim yeah i was gonna tell up. you that i was gonna tell you about that i was like let's talk about riding on the whim <laughs> so like, so explain you explain that? it better than me explain what riding on the whim is why it's for artists things like that she does it better than me i explain it and i'm like so it's for artists you get a beat she's like she does the whole nine yards the so i'm like spiel. you know <laughs> So Riding on a Whim is when artists of all kinds, creatives of all kinds get to sign up. And on the day of the event, you are given 30 minutes, a, a word or a sentence to incorporate. And you have to create a music hook in the 30 minutes and perform it at the end. So it's a challenge on your songwriting skills, you as an artist in general. And you get to create and grow your network of friends and people in the creatives. And we first started it off on our Instagram at the end of 2020, actually, Mm -hmm. and then decided to make it public for everyone to get to be a part of it. Like at the end of the summer, it was like of 2021. Yeah. So sign up. So so sign up. (laughs) And we also have like a promo, like a sponsor. So studio 411, they're coming out, they're sponsoring it too. So that's going to be whoever wins, they'll finish your, what is it? Your session for you or your recording. Yeah. They get to finish the song for the hook that they choose. At the mm. end. So sign up. Definitely. I think they'll be interested more for like, so we do this monthly and so, so definitely. Yeah. But, um, so sign up. <laughs> <laughs> and then the last thing is these, I just want them to mention the one thing that they're doing aside from pie that is happening in these upcoming months. Ooh, she put you all in the spot. I'm opening a mini library. A mini library. That is dope. Slash cardigans. And cool. Hustling. Where at? Slash cardigans. Um, through the looking glass. Okay. Okay. Grand opening is January 30. Get January 30. Get <laughs> your tickets. Uh, go. <laughs> go. Go. See, dang, that's cool. That's cool. So you're, you're like, you like reading, you like writing, things like yes, that. Yeah. I that's awesome. That's cool. Reading. That's the other thing I like doing other than this. Uh, other than, I like yeah, how other you, said this. This. you said this. You said this. You didn't say this. You said this. <laughs> I'm not a human. You're like basura. <laughs> Okay. Anyways, what about you? Oh, I'm teaching a hip hop class. Hip hop. Oh, so you dance? Do it. Okay. Me? Yeah, I do. Please, 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 come on. Come on, you have to. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. Maybe. We'll think about it right now. Okay, that's a no. (laughs) Yeah, well, I'm teaching a hip hop class February 24th. That's a Thursday, and it's going to be at Through the Looking Glasses. Can you do it like every week or so, or like monthly? Um, 
we're just gonna yes. see how it turns how out. It the first time. Do you have people signing up and stuff? Or? Not yet. No, not yet. I just gotta figure out like the logistics. That is cool. Also. That is really cool. That is dope. So that's but that's obviously Isaac is already <laughs> signed up. Yeah. It's yeah. number one star right here. <laughs> she's laughing. She's like, she's like him dancing. Like she's imagining me dancing, breaking a leg or something, you know? Like oh, that's horrible. And the last question, I didn't even ask it. Like I know we've been going for a while, but like, what is something you guys know now that you wish you wouldn't know when you first got started? I really love asking that question. I just really like asking that question. Can we repeat it? No, oh, I wish I knew that I love to sing, I guess. I mean, back then I, I did see that as just a job and I didn't see it outside of the church. I, but I should have known back then that. Something you they, wanted to do. Yeah, yeah. Like, Hey, you love it and you're great at it. Mm-hmm. Pursue it. And that works. Cause a lot of people who like watch and they're like, they're always like hesitant of like, should I get started now? That helps, you know, like just yeah. do it, just go out and do it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, I wish I knew that. Just because I'm seeing with my sisters doesn't mean it was going to be easy. Yeah. If anything, it, it was going to probably be harder. Thing, no, it was, it was harder. Yeah. But, <laughs> see, but see because that? of how like difficult it was, it's definitely um, brought us closer. Mm-hmm. And it's made our um, relationships with each other, I feel like, a lot more solid. Obviously, there's things that we still um, are going to learn. But um, because I learned how hard it was to actually seeing with them outside of church. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I feel like they've helped me grow as a person. That's right. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that. That's really good. The only thing I'm going to say nice about you guys. One. What about you? What about you? Um, that it's okay to rest. It's okay to rest. I like that. I really time. like that. It's okay to slow down. People think they need to work 18 hours. And a break isn't hours. a reward, you guys. It's a need. It's a need. Yeah. I like that. It is a need. Mm-hmm. And I always tell people, I'm like, it's better to work three hours, four hours, but make those like four hours of work. You know, mm-hmm. you don't have to work 18 hours, 10 hours, like. No, you'll you'll kill yourself, you know. So nine so, to five. Nine Sorry. to five, you know. Sorry. I'm trying to <laughs> <laughs> you said that. <laughs> um, no, but I mean, where can people find you guys? Where can people listen to you guys? Things like that. Give you guys a little shout out before we go out. Mm-hmm. Just so you can find us on our Instagram under pi underscore music. If you just just type in pi music, it should pop up. And then same thing on Facebook. We are on TikTok. We're trying to get that ball TikTok. rolling as even our YouTube, we're trying to get rolling. So if you want to look up Pi Music on YouTube, try to find us there. Definitely give us a follow, a subscribe. We'll be posting more videos, more covers. And we're also currently working on trying to get a mini EP out. So if you check our bio in our Instagram, you'll see a link. Click it and hopefully you can help donate to get us to our goal to try to get. Oh, I thought it was the writing on the whim link, but I guess not. Okay. Oh, <laughs> sign up. <laughs> sign up. <laughs> No, well, thank you guys so much for tuning in today's episode. We're here at Galeria Lincoln. So if you guys are an artist, um, Tino mentioned that um, if you're an artist, come check it out. You know, he houses artists or artworks and like that. I also wanted to mention the man behind the scenes, Angel. Um, he has his whole vlog Ooh. coming up on YouTube. So make sure you guys go check it down, bro. You better link it down like on the description and stuff like that. You know, it took him a lot of guts to maybe kind of get that out, but he finally started. It's an amazing vlog. So big shout out to Angel for getting started on that. And, um, you know, we'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much.